Anganaga. And apparently I like turtles. I have both of my followers. But when you install Alpine Linux, it feels like it's speedrun. You are going to have a blast trying to figure out the Enigma code that is the wrong key map on the wrong keyboard. UTC as a default, completely fine. So maybe there's an opportunity there for Alpine. If you've ever installed a Microsoft operating system or Apple operating system by hand recently, you'll know those can take literally hours to do. Aegis Drangus. Debian is just a horrific experience trying to install. So I feel like slimming down the standard installer is a good thing. If you are using this personally, you should go with Crypt so that you have an encrypted disk. We're gonna blow it right out of the water. Blow him out of the water, Dad! Because that's what we're doing today. Daddy's handling this, it's okay. They're still doing serial boot process. It's not in parallel by default, which is unfortunate. So when I run an update, boom, it's done. And then we'll run the Sway command to launch our graphical environment. This might feel like you're hacking the Gibson doing this. Come on, explode out of there. Stop the fraud which I totally understand, you know. The Gibson doesn't want to be hacked, doesn't not want to be hacked, who knows? A special key, plus enter, you press those buttons at the same time, boom, you get the foot terminal. I prefer not running Chrome. I also prefer not running Firefox. But between the two, I'm gonna go with Firefox. When I go into Firefox, the very first thing I do is add on uBlock Origin. If the NSA is saying, hey, you're gonna get hacked if you don't use an ad blocker, then it's probably safe to say you should probably use an ad blocker, unless the NSA is using the ad blocker as a backdoor dark reader, because you don't want to get flashbanged unless you're into that. So this is another terrible thing about Firefox that I have to go through. Every time I have to go through every single setting, I look at every single setting and set them appropriately. And the reasoning is because one, they took the time to build telemetry and two, they set it opt-in by default, which is the absolute worst thing you can do. The Arch wiki documentation, what do we have? What are we missing? What do we need? Your good deed will help everyone else. You do not get this in a closed source world. US proprietary companies. Two, what do they like to do? Layoffs. Who do they like to hire? H1B visas. So there is no shortage of technical talent. They're constantly being laid off. And if they're not like the cream of the crop, I feel like that's not what matters most of the time. What matters is the opportunity to support your community and growing. You know, if somebody likes to jump through hoops that are on fire, you let them do that. <laughs> are you the flaming hoop police? as opposed to creating a new thing, which they like to steal in Redox. So if you want a community that will snipe any contributions you have, then there's Redox for you. So just trying to figure these things out, like lining up all the holes in the Swiss cheese, and then I remember, oh, hey, I started configuring Firefox and I didn't get that far. See, and this is interesting. So they have a dark theme, website appearance, but it doesn't apply to the actual browser. As you can see, it's still that creamy, that creamy white color. It's like a, a never ending freaking uh, mystery running some of these open source projects. And what you're experiencing basically is just the maturity isn't there yet. It takes time. More for Mozilla. Uh, I guess I need that setting. Look at our customized dashboard. You need your Microsoft feed. Get it here now in your start menu. Like, I don't want any of that. Who knows when a new version of Firefox comes out and they opt you into some other bullcrap. So it's like every time I install it, I go through it and I'm expecting there to be something there that wasn't there before. See, look at this. Sent all this crap to Firefox. No. If you want my crap, pay me. Here we're setting our, our DNS over HTTPS, something I think everyone should be doing. I would like to offer DNS service over HTTPS. I don't know if that's through Wizards Anonymous or what, but that's an offering I would like to offer others because I don't really know what some of these places are doing. Like, if you want to knowingly join a botnet, you know, I'm not going to stop you. Anna Montana isn't either. This, what is it called? What does David Attenborough do? You know, whatever he does, I'm doing what he does, just not anywhere near as good. These are all IP addresses of different public free, as in they will monitor everywhere you're going to and sell that now. The Quad9 is the one that worked. So DNS is one of the most important things to get right when it comes to security. If you don't have that layer, you're effed. And the bind is D, special D. Everybody loves a special D. And so once you've uh, shoot your shot, then, uh, oh, well, thanks you for telling me to go to Facebook where they no longer do fact checking for misinformation. Thanks, Mr. Z. I'm giving it the old fashioned reboot at this point. I'm not certain why I'm doing a reboot, but I am. So RC Parallel, it's the very first option in the config file. You change it from no DS and then everything is better. It breaks some stuff. Okay, what stuff does it break? I'm open to using any other Wayland desktop environment. Hopefully Cosmic doesn't get wrecked. It's the only, well, it's written in Rust and it's a desktop environment. So it will be a first, it will be the first to someone on Mint or MX or, or I forget what the other, Bazite, you know, people who use these things, they're gonna tell you that Cosmic is trash. That's fine. They can use whatever they wanna use, you know. This is the end. This is the end. This is Red Rock. This is the end. Is that what they say? I don't know what that means, dingy. Someone said they didn't want Parallel to go in, which would save, you know, hundreds or thousands or millions of man hours per year by booting faster. Their counter argument to that was the line doesn't wrap properly, but you can't solve 
all the thousands and millions of man hours that have been removed from humanity because it's set to serial. We had a Honganonga, and then we got our Sway desktop environment, which was super simple to install, to install one command. And then after that was Firefox, a terrible browser, because it's like the reds versus blues. You know, you give them a really shitty blue option if you want them to pick the red option. This is a case where the red option is that Firefox. I don't know, but they do like to make questionable decisions. People might get interested in some of the space travel stuff. They might be interested in participating in that. I already have membership videos, but I don't have on the censorship platform, the YT platform, I don't have their required number of subscribers, which is the requirement to have memberships on their platform. I'm guessing I'm gonna have to set up my own platform where I don't have that restriction to offer members videos because some of this content is just too juicy to be public, basically. <laughs> There's a lot coming out. I think it's really all based around the community because y'all are a bunch of and that's my favorite kind of person. Come and give me a hand. I already have. And you might be asking yourself, why would I scrimble to a bunch of wizards? Whoa now, what have we got here? We've got a Radza Zero Two Pro, and we are unpackaging it, we unboxing it, and then going to attempt to set up an operating system. So, how does that go? Well, <laughs> you will soon find out. So these were from, I don't remember if it's that A Race or Arachi website or the Allnet website. It was one of them. It was whatever one that also sells the heat sink. And this was recorded on a Logitech camera. That's why you can see at how well it excels at staying unfocused. Yeah, so there's the Radza Zero Two Pro. It's nice because it's like a plastic bag and then there was bubble wrap and then it's in a paper bubble wrap bag. And then some of the individual boxes are shrink wrapped in plastic. So nothing moist getting in there. Yeah, and so what do we have? We had the Radza Zero Two Pro single board computer. We have the 30 watt USB-C power adapter and the USB-C to USB-C cable and the USB-C to barrel jack cable and a heat sink for the board. Those are the four pieces we ordered. I figured it's worth getting all the original Radza branded everything just to see what the quality is for what they're offering. And there's the board, nice and small, as you can see, smaller than a mouse. It's not a large board at all. The goal is for this to be in a DIY mobile device, likely a DIY laptop. And so I figured it's best to go with a low power, high performance, low volume board. These were all factors going into choosing this particular board. This is the cooler that you can purchase an active, uh, I believe it's an aluminum heat sink. And I do not want to put it on to the board until I can do some sort of benchmarks to see if there's a difference in having it versus not having the cooler. Because if there's not a huge difference in performance, then it's just adding weight. So we have our, it has the flip out prongs on the AC adapter. And the first thing I try out is the USB-C to barrel cable here and as you can see there is no barrel jack so yeah you don't need one of these this is likely going to get resold i don't know where people resell things these days do they put it on ebay where they put it yeah so that one is not usable when i purchased it i figured oh well i'll get everything if there's a barrel jack then i'll use that to reserve the, another of the USB C ports but as you can see there's no barrel jack <laughs> so that is completely on me so now we got the USB C, and these i believe they are silicon cables and we have the board plugged in, but not into power. We have to source a uh, AC power and we have it plugged in and there is a red LED. So assuming the board has some degree of functionality, what we have here is a just a VM that we're going to have for pulling down basically the operating system or the, the image to put onto the board. And so what do I do at first? I open up Ventoy's website and then I realize that this window, this Firefox window in Sway is still at Cranny White. And so I do a search, is there a way to put a dark mode in Firefox so that the actual whole window is dark? And then find a, a post on Reddit that says, basically they're in the same situation and there is no system level dark mode currently in Sway, I believe is what it says. I should say this video was initially recorded, I want to say in August. Yeah, August 21st of 2024. 
So this was quite a while ago. This voiceover, the narration is in February of 2025 on the 17th. And yeah, so I'm going through trying to determine like, hey, is there a simple way of doing this? And it does not appear that there is a simple way to set a whole window to dark mode. At least at this point when I'm in my journey with Sway. Later I find a way, but it's not consistent. It's like GTK windows maybe you can set dark, but the QT windows don't go dark. It, it, it's like so convoluted. I, I don't, there's so many things I don't understand about Sway, but I actually have come quite a long way since August. Since daily driving it, after what happened with LXQT, uh, which will be in a later video, if you'd like that video to come sooner, uh, just uh, leave a comment. But as you can see in the video, the size of a quarter versus the single board computer there, the Radza Zero 2 Pro. And now I'm on Ventoy's website and I'm just like, what is going on? This website is so... What's the word? <laughs> if you know, trash. It's not great. It's not great. And then I'm like, oh, well, is this dark mode that's causing it to look this bad? And so I turn off dark mode and no, it's even worse. <laughs> And so after that, uh, you know, I'm just looking around the website and I'm like, these websites, this website in particular could be simplified so much. Uh, there's like so many links to different things that are not like uh, directly functional to users. And also something that I found was happening back then was my Sway would just lock up and I didn't know why. Why is Sway locking up? I didn't solve this until today, basically, <laughs> February 17th. And it's due to the... I believe it's due to the Alpine ships a 6.12 kernel that has a bunch of issues with AMD processors where they just lock up. But you can APK add the Linux-Edge kernel and then just APK delete the Linux-LTS, the long-term support kernel, because that one is busted AF. If you're on an AMD processor, you're gonna your system's just going to lock up randomly. Frequently, frequently. I was getting more than 25 times a day before I got this new kernel and and i have to say thank you to sir tonics who was very helpful in the alpine gitlab when i opened a second issue regarding this trying to determine like what is going on but anyways back to this single board computer so what i'm trying to do is figure out what the name is of the sd card that i have and i'm also trying to pass through as you can see this is a vert manager vm i'm trying to pass through a usb or an sd card i believe i'm going to trying to pass it through to the vm so that i can write ventoy to it and then i'm going to try to write an os image onto ventoy and then plug the if i'm writing this to sd card i'm going to plug that sd card into the single board computer or if i'm writing to it a usb drive then i'm going to plug the usb drive into this board that's my thought process at this point and i'm trying to go through and figure out how to pass through a vert manager and not having the most success i think i may end up yeah we'll we'll see in a moment here what ends up happening but yeah going through and just trying to figure out how to do all these things you know it was uh, my first time well or maybe not my first time trying to pass through usb but i was finding difficulty this time see and you can see there that i'm actually passing through the usb hub that has the sd card or the usb drive plugged into it and it is you, you can see it right there physical usb device and it says the neurosis which is the i believe the chip who that anchor uses in their usb hubs and here what happened uh, I am not certain, but it could have been that the Sway locked up again and due to the AMD processor with that particular kernel version and we rebooted. So this problem was happening back in August, which is good to know because it has not been determined until February 17th and it's still in the long-term support kernel for Alpine. This problem is still exists there. On the latest version of Alpine 3.21.3, I think is the current version. Uh, in this video is 3.20.2 or something like that. And here I'm trying to figure out basically uh, why it's not mapping through to the VM. I'm trying to do everything contained into this particular virtual machine. And then as you can see, what happens is at this point I was daily driving Nix OS. No more, no more. Uh, NixOS is, uh, well, it's proven to, after the hostile takeover, it's, it's shown, it's reared its head. <laughs> and so we have, I believe the SD card 
uh, no longer pass through to the VM. This is just straight up on the host system, which was running NixOS at that point in time as a daily driver, which I do not recommend. Maybe in the past I might have, but no longer. And so here we're trying to figure out what the syntax is now that we know what device the SD card is in or the USB drive. And we are trying to install Ventoy onto that drive, that disk. And it does appear to be an SD card that we're trying to write it to because the single board computer, it does have USB, but it also has SD card. And I figured let's try, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to try to boot from the onboard EMMC storage. And if it doesn't find that, I would assume it would try to boot from SD card. And if it's unable to do that, then I would assume it's trying to boot from USB. This is all just guessing. I'm used to the BIOS world, and which is now UEFI. And I'm not used to single board computers. This is a completely new thing to me. And also it's ARM on top of that. So it's a different architecture. So now it appears that we have Ventoy installed onto the SD card. And what we're going to do is copy over an Alpine. But as you may notice, that is the x86-64 architecture version that we're, we copied over. And we should have been copying the ARM version since this is an ARM processor. It is the ARM instruction set architecture. And we are going to try to get our SD card in there. But what else is happening? It appears that on the right, you can see the mini HDMI is plugged in for video. So we're going to, here we go, now that the screen is blank, it is what is likely being shown is the capture of the HDMI out. And so that's why the screen is black. It should, this is showing what is coming out of that single board computer through the mini HDMI. Now we have power and we should be getting something on screen at this point. But what are we getting? Not a whole lot. As you can see, the size of the single board computer versus like a quarter or an SD card, mini SD, micro SD. I don't know what the, I think it's micro SD is what they're called. So it's very small and nothing is showing on screen, which is not great. I feel like the manufacturer should do something to show a display on screen as soon as it gets power so that you know it's not a problem with the board. But I think in this video, we don't get too far. I'll, I will put some spoilers. I don't know if I made later videos, but basically we end up getting an image of Debian. They have a Debian image and an Ubuntu image, and they have a GitHub repository showing how they build these packages. And what I'm trying to do is get Alpine on here, but I'm not getting any video output. There may be a later date or a later video that shows uh, the process of what we're doing here, but ultimately my goal is to get Alpine Linux on here so that we're not wasting the precious resources that we have on this single board. And unfortunately, at this point, I'm just at a loss as to why when you give it power, nothing's coming out on the display. And I totally understand, like, uh, there's a YouTube channel, Platima Tinkers, and he has a lot of videos dealing with these boards. And so you, if you want to see <laughs> pure frustration, uh, you know, get yourself a single board computer with an ARM processor and try to figure out how the heck that works. Because I still don't understand how it works. Like, there's DAS U-Boot, so you're, you're putting on U-Boot, but I don't understand, like, because you put it on like the disc and it's not something that's like on the board and so i don't really understand like what it's what it's version of a bios is and how it works like what the order is and there's a bunch of like readme documentation but it's so unhelpful like the wording is so confusing so that's sort of the end of where we get on this particular day trying to set this up i believe we move on to getting Haloi and irc set up so that we can get notifications when we have chatters <clears throat> there it is i i hope you guys enjoyed that i am fucked. <laughs>